I've been using iOS 17 on my main device for quite some time now and this update has some pretty neat new features that can only be accessed by changing or tweaking a few settings. Stick around and in this video you will learn a thing or two when it comes to the new update. If we go into our settings right here and go down to where it says screen time it looks normal but if you look down here we have this new feature that says screen distance and if you click there you can see we have a new pop-up screen and a splash screen here that tells you about how to reduce eye strain with this new feature and this avoids the risk of neuphormia in children and screen distance will let you when you are holding your iPhone or iPad with Face ID too close for an extended period of time. So this feature seems to work on a device that has Face ID and if you want to set it up you can click where it says continue and you come up with a second screen that tells you how screen distance works and this is a pretty cool neat feature that will be able to help you with screen shielding position guide as well as viewing distance so you can now go on and turn on screen distance and this is the toggle once it's on and if you bring it too close to yourself or if it's at a safe distance it will be able to tell you and give you an update this next feature was not highlighted by Apple when it comes to WWDC, but it's one of the best features that iOS got. So if we go into our settings and go to passwords right there, you know, it will scan your face ID or you need to input your passcode. And then when you come to this section, you can see we have password options. And if you click where it says password options right there, you can see we have auto field passwords and pass keys. And then if you look down here a little bit verification codes we have this clean up automatically and here it says automatically delete verification codes in messages and mail after inserting and autofill. This is one of those amazing features where if you want to log into a website and you get a text message as a form of verification, the iPhone will be able to tell when you have input or use the code and then in order to save space on your device, it will automatically delete it resulting in you not having multiple useless messages in your inbox. Slight implementation with AI with this next one. So in settings, when you go to where it says accessibility right there and go down to where it says personal voice. If you click there, you can see we can create a new personal voice. Now to learn more, if we click here, you can see what this is all about and it says it this will record a series of sentences that you are going to read aloud and it may take up to one hour and it will generate your personal voice and this will allow you to use your personal voice anywhere communicate with live speech which lets you type in your own voice in facetime phone and assistive communication apps this is a good assistive touch feature where you can type to your iphone instead of speaking to it in the supported application applications and you can always set it up. If we go into our settings again and go to where it says Siri and search right there you can see we have an update here so now Siri can listen for just Siri or if you want you can keep it the old way style where it listens to hey and then the phrase but now you can see we can shorten that where iPhone will listen for Siri or both at this beginning of a request when you want to prompt your iPhone. So hopefully by just saying Siri, I won't trigger your devices, but it's a pretty neat new feature that's here. Into our settings, if we go to this section that says privacy and security and go a little bit down, you can see we have this sensitive content warning. Now, if we click there, you can see when the, your iPhone detects that there's going to be nude content, photos or videos, it will be able to give you an alert so that you can protect yourself. And you can see here, it's able to do that whether you are receiving an airdrop content or whether it's in messages or an incoming video, which is a good safety feature that you might want to turn on. You probably know this, but if you have an iPhone and it's paired with an Apple Watch, if you want to ping or find your iPhone, you can go into your control center on the Apple Watch and then you can click here and it will ping the iPhone. But now with this new feature and update on iOS 17, we can do it 
using our iPhone and ping our Apple Watch. So the way we do this, we have to go into our settings and then we have to go to where it says control center right here. And if you go down all the way to the bottom, you can see we have this section that says ping my watch. Now, if we want this to show up on our control center right here, we have to add it. So if you click the little plus icon there, you can see it's now there. And if we go on our control center, you can see it's the last item that we added. If we wanted to bring it like on top, we can always press on the three dots and then take it to the top right here. And if we go on our control center, you can see it's right there. And if I bring my Apple Watch closer, you can see if I press this, it pings my Apple Watch. This is a pretty cool, neat feature. If you're a person that loses their Apple Watch and you want to use your iPhone to find it, yeah, you might want to turn this on. Similar to what I showed you before, if you go into your settings and go to where it says screen time, you can go to this section that says communication safety. Before this feature, we had accessed it through the privacy and security, but now you can see communication safety is here. And if you want to turn it on for someone that you look after or a kid, then you can come into here and turn on screen time communication safety and you can view child safety resources as well while you are on this section. If you have not been using AirDrop on the previous iOS version, with iOS 17, there's now a stronger reason why you should start using AirDrop. This can be found by going into settings and then if you go to general, you can see AirDrop and handoff. And now with this new update of iOS 17, AirDrop will automatically continue to send even if you are outside of the AirDrop range. And you can see here if you had this set to never, then I would recommend you set it to where it asks you when someone wants to send you AirDrop files. Because if they go out of the AirDrop range, it will continue to send using cellular or Wi-Fi connectivity. And for that work, you both the sender that is yourself and the receiver will need to be signed into the Apple ID. So go into your settings and sign in and then you'll be able to enjoy the updated AirDrop. If we go into Safari right here on the iPhone, you'll probably be able to see some of the things I was looking at. But if you click on this tab here, you can see you have a private browsing and this is going to be locked by default. You can unlock it like this and then if you open it, it will tell you that Safari is designated with, is designed with privacy in mind by preventing tracking by default and private browsing adds additional privacy protection for your private tabs. After you close the tabs, you will need to sign in with your Apple ID or passcode. And if we go into our settings right here and look for the Safari applications right there, you can see here, if we go down, you can change or add profiles. So this is a new addition. And if you click add a profile, you can choose what profile it is that you want to create on the update, whether it's for school, for work, for education or for adventure. And you have a various number of items that you can choose and you can choose which is your start page. And if you are using your profile for work or if you are setting it up for different people, when you open up Safari, you'll be prompted to try and log in with your profile. If we go into settings and go to Safari, we have the option to change private search engine. So whenever we do that, we can choose if we want DuckDuckGo or use the default search engine. When we go into Safari private browsing mode, it has been improved with iOS 17 and it also removes location tagging parameters when you share a link to someone. Inside settings, if you go to where it says privacy and security, if you choose photos, now with this update, you can see it shows you all your applications and the access levels that these applications have. So for example, if I wanted to change the access level on documents, I can choose none, meaning it won't have access to my pictures. And then if I want to have this application have access to selected photos or videos, then I can select those and then I'll click done and only the selected applications will be able to be accessed by this documents. And you can do this for all your different sites and applications to increase your privacy and security. 
under the same privacy and security tab if you go all the way down you'll see this lockdown mode this was existing and you can see it's meant to be used in extreme measures where you feel you are being targeted and the update to this is that if you enable lockdown mode on your iphone the paired devices such as the ipad apple watch will also be or go into lockdown mode and this will result in better security for your other devices this is an update to the apple id so now if you change your passcode and then you try and unlock your device and you input the wrong password and you are locked out with this update ios 17 going forward you have about 72 hours to revert the password or passcode changes which might be able to help you if you're a person that has just recently changed your passcode and you have forgotten about it in settings if we go to where it says camera we are able to change more parameters here so you can see here now we have a new composition under this section that says level so now when we open up our camera and we try to take a picture there is a meter that's going to show us how level we are this is how it's going to look and now when you are taking pictures you can always make it straight so that your pictures will look aligned and professional also if you go into our settings and go to where it says general and go to this keyboard section right here you can see this now has support for the emoji keyboard if you turn this on and then you go into your messages and you click on this plus icon you can see now you have this sticker tab if you want to convert your images into stickers or be able to add third party stickers you can do this now with this update when you turn this on another new change here when it comes to this update is standby mode so if you go into your settings you can see we actually have a subsection that says standby mode and if you click there you can enable standby mode and then this will automatically turn on when your phone is in landscape mode and is connected to a charger and always on display is on when it comes to this update they do have some few new updated wallpapers so you can go into your settings and go to where it says wallpapers right here and you can add new wallpapers here here you can see some of the sections that have been added and the one that i'm using right here is under collections that i have on ios 17 so if you want to customize your device that is something that you can turn on and make it work for you other than that those are some of the you know little stuff that i feel make ios 17 better as an update that you might want to turn on let me know what you think about this video if you like it give it a thumbs up and that's about it for me stay safe and i'll see you in the next one peace